throughout my work uh, with the ICRC in the past uh, few years, there has been a various humanitarian uh, diplomacy efforts set for uh, influencing uh, the parties for armed conflict and others uh, that has triggered down positive impact on our negotiations in the field level. In my organization has uh, invested a lot to facilitate uh, uh, the negotiation process in the field level by uh, uh, building the capacity of the frontline staffs to train and retrain uh, uh, staffs on the engagement process uh, in, in the field, building relationships where we stakeholders uh, uh, designing negotiation process. Apart from uh, uh, training uh, uh, staff, it, uh, there is also discussion with uh, donors on funding uh, issues relating to negotiation, issues related to counterterrorism, uh, which is part of uh, our effort for humanitarian uh, uh, diplomacy. I think in general negotiation, even though I'm, I'm a surgeon, takes place in any facet in detail in life and in also professional life. I remember one particular um, case, a scenario, an incident that happened some years ago while I was on a mission with ICSC. So there was a, um, a devastating um, explosion where there was a lot of people uh, burned and wounded in an already pre-existing uh, violent and unstable uh, environment. You have to imagine the place was looted, was an, an almost empty uh, hospital apart from many hundreds of patients at the spot. There was no electricity, there was no water. So I made the decision to go and uh, about six, seven hours after notification, this um, decision done by the delegation made us actually land in this particular field. And then I, um, as um, one of the medical team members, was in a matter of minutes just uh, involved into explaining the situation to all stakeholders, to both sides, pointed out what was needed. And I absolutely um, um, had access to the people and an understanding, but what had been done before by the leading characters of ICSC and the head of delegation was mobilizing uh, the staff, the equipment, the, the resources within a very short time frame, and also having already the um, participants or the stakeholders in on the spot being in, informed about that we were coming and what we were doing. So I think it is a good example to, to um, just light up to see what in a very limited time frame happened and how diplomatic efforts and humanitarian negotiation uh, in the end, very concretely, uh, trans were transformed into an, a very efficient emergency response. Uh, from the uh, country office down to the uh, regional and to the HQ, there have been an harmonization and discussion going on and on on uh, frequently on see uh, what are the strategies that are supposed to be put in place. Although um, higher level diplomacy is taking place at the headquarters at the state level, many efforts are set earlier uh, to this to the stage on the field to shape up the effort for those uh, who who represent uh, the field in the headquarters. I do believe uh, that when designing a humanitarian diplomacy effort, there should be an involvement for the field uh, uh, practitioners, especially those having long experience in the field and are able to represent and uh, take decisions. When you're in the field, those weekly meetings or briefings, basically, they are important, but I do not believe that any expert and any team member needs to at any time give his own statement to, to um, um, a complex issue where you are not as firm as um, a professional. So I would not ask um, uh, Peter Maurer to do an amputation. On the other hand, I would not be able to um, do a leading a negotiation with a president of a state. The HQ sometimes understand how diplomacy should move on. So uh, did they discuss with uh, the frontline staff and see the input that they can add and uh, with, the, uh, with, uh, with input from the frontline staffs and other 
uh, from the region and uh, HQ can be harmonized to have a standard uh, uh, tools or, or, or position on, 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 on a specific diplomacy uh, message. A point that I want to make is a, a recommendation for the the international uh, uh, community, national, international humanitarian community, to look into going down down to the field level, because the frontliners today are being trained on how to carry out negotiation, how to do engagement, but the opportunities might not be there. Sometimes it might be very tricky that because of the structures of maybe the non-state armed groups that are available within a, a specific uh, a context, but also there could be some legislation or con con that is counter-terrorism legislation that is preventing some, some type of uh, engagement. And this engagement that is not happening is putting the lives of the humanitarian aid workers sometimes at high risk. The only expectations of the humanitarian diplomacy deployed at high ha headquarters level is to continue influencing and persuading the decision makers to facilitate our uh, negotiations in the field and to ensure our ability to access and to implement our operations. At the same time, to continue involving the field practitioners to uh, contribute and share their views um, during the humanitarian diplomacy preparations. And we are always expecting that, uh, or we appreciate to hear some feedback uh, on, on the outcomes of, of, uh, of their uh, humanitarian diplomacy uh, negotiations uh, at, at the higher levels.